Good morning, folks. Pictures on the top right is Greenland ice sheet melting this year, except it happened from July 8th to the 12th, just four days. The land beneath their feet is unsettled and sometimes falling away in Monet, Ecuador. This is one quake rocking the planet. These are global L waves registered on every GSN station and were the result of a 6.6 .6 in Indonesia that the USGS has downgraded to a 6.4. The North Atlantic coast of Florida saw another mass fish die off. Two miles of beach are covered. They say it's just the fish that the fishermen didn't want and threw back. And that's bullcrap. This, dozens of workers at an Indian new plant were exposed to high levels of tritium for the second time in a few months. What's perhaps scarier is the number of new plants under construction or consideration there. Even with their population growth, they're aiming for an increase in nuclear power reliance from 3% to 25% in the next 40 years. Solar wind data from Soho here. Top panel was the speed coming back down from yesterday's minor coronal hole impact. It was short lived. The proton counts do remain elevated at this time, just under official storm levels at the dotted line. Quiet calm on the GOES magnetometer and the induction magnetometer shows virtually no space weather disturbance. No big flares on the Earth facing side of the sun. Largest was a C4 yesterday. This has the potential to change soon, however. Let's take a look at some of the active regions up north. The magnetics are relatively simple. There are plasma filaments up there, though, that make that area dangerous. Down south is much more defined bipolar region, and you can see there is room for morphing and mixing of the polarities. You can see those regions coming in on the left. Leading their way is a big, dark, trans-equatorial coronal hole. Her strong solar wind stream will arrive two to three days after she faces us directly, which could happen as early as late tonight or tomorrow. So as we await round six or seven from the same coronal hole, there's a race to see if she arrives before Mercury lines up with the sun. Earthquake watch continues, let's hope that the 6.6 .6 last night was all there is. Last but not least, if you get out well before sunrise, the planets are out, but Pleiades is very visible as well and lines up nicely above Jupiter and Venus. The bright star appearing between them, as many of you have asked, is Aldebaran, and that is Orion coming up simultaneously with Sunrise. This program is called Stellarium and it is free to download, and that's the news, folks. Eyes open. Be safe.